two words for you guys today, Ariane Titmus. And I'll tell you what, Australia is in a cloud nine type of mood, thanks to Ariane. And you know what, I'll keep those spirits lifted and I'm going to hit some music. Tell you what, I'll tell you a bit about Ariane. She's 20 years old, originally from Tasmania, moved up to Queensland to pursue her swimming career. She was in the women's 400 meter freestyle final today, coming up against the legendary American Katie Ledecky. She had never lost an individual Olympic event, five golds, 15 world championships in her time. Amazing stuff. Oh, Titmus, she wasn't looking great. Halfway through, Katie Ledecky was body length in front, led by 0.66 seconds, but Thorpey lifted our spirits on the commentary saying Titmus is still a shot here. She is going to spring into life in the last 100 meters, the last 50 meters, and spring into life. She did. I'll tell you what, she absolutely erased to that finish line, that 50, last 50 meters. She turned it on. Australia was screaming from their couches, their lockdown couches. Ariane Titmus won it with a personal best of 3 minutes 56.69 seconds. Ledecky, 3 minutes 57 seconds and 36 milliseconds. Awesome stuff to see. Australia was going off, and it wasn't just Australia that was going off. There was a certain guy in Japan that was going off. I'm sure you've seen this video. If you haven't, check it out. This guy called uh, Dean Boxall, he's Ariane's coach. He, he was going absolutely bonkers. Let me tell you, in the crowd, he's ripping off his mask, doing a bit of pelvic thrust type action. There was a security woman called Minami Iwama. She looked terrified. She didn't had no idea what to do. She just let him go for it, really. And jubilant scenes sparked there. Jubilant scenes sparked all over Australia. That's enough of that music for now. But there is more good news in the swimming with Emma McKeon winning bronze in the 100 meter butterfly. Congrats, Emma. That is an awesome result. She was very, very happy with that personal best of 55.72 seconds. Oh, just, just edged out the American Tory Husk by 0.01 of a second to get that bronze medal. Maggie McNeil, the Canadian, won that 55.59. Pretty close with Emma McKean, actually, but the look on her face when she realized she won, she won, priceless, priceless, classic stuff. Go check out that picture of the Canadian Maggie McNeil if you can as well. One more medal for yesterday. The Aussies, they got bronze in the men's 4 by 100 meter freestyle, but I tell you what, they did not look like it 300 meters in. Matt Temple, Zachy Nursey, Alexander Graham, they'd done their legs. They were sixth. Going into Kyle Chalmers' leg, but Kyle Chalmers did what Kyle Chalmers does best. He raced the 100-meter freestyle like his life depended on it. 46.44 seconds for that 100 meters, that last leg. Absolutely turned on the Jets. Finished third, of course, winning the bronze medal behind the US and Italy. And that bronze medal, the other bronze medal for McKeon and the gold for Ariane Titmus means Australia is in seventh place on the Olympic medal tally. Of course, China and the US and Japan, uh, third, second, and first, respectively. Um, they have, yeah, really gone out to a bit of a substantial lead there at the top, as they did yesterday when I was talking to you about the very same thing, but some more use in the swimming. 19-year-old Tommy Neal for the Aussies missed the 200-meter freestyle final by 0.03 of a second. Oh, gutting, gutting for Tommy, but he's only 19. As the song says, he will bounce back better than ever. Mitch Larkin, also, he's into the men's 100-meter backstroke final. He came second in his semi. And in the same event, for the women, uh, Kayla McEwen and Emily Seabon, they're into the 100-meter backstroke final. That is tomorrow. will be very, very exciting. I'll be cheering on from my lounge room, as I have been all Olympics. Getting on to a bit of where do we begin that biased action Review here. The Hockey Roos, Rachel Lynch's Hockey Roos, they beat China 6 0 to continue their undefeated run at the Olympics. They're 2 0. We love to see that. They're one of the big favourites, as our expert guest will tell us coming up, and she'll give us a whole lot of more insight. But speaking of old favourites here at Where Do We Begin, Lena Mihailovic and her Aussie Stingers. That was a remarkable game against the Netherlands. It was a big, big game. They were four goals down, really close to half time, a few seconds from half time. Oh, they turned it on like Mitch Larkin in that 100 metres. Uh, 
sorry, not like Mitchell Larkin, like, uh, what's his name? His name is Kyle Chalmers. Oh, what am I doing tonight? It's a late night, only four days in, not looking very good, but they were phenomenal in that second half. The Stingers, they won 15-12 against the Netherlands. The undefeated crunch game against Spain on Friday at 8.50 p.m. if they want to get a good quarterfinal fixture. Alex Winwood, the other Where Do We Begin guest in action. Oh, devastating. Devastating for him. He performed so well. Patrick Chimnyemba from Zambia just had that slightly better range, those long arms. Alex is a bit shorter and slightly quicker, slightly more nimble on his feet. One judge gave Alex the victory, but he ended up losing on a split decision, which... Oh, gut-wrenching, gut-wrenching stuff, but he's still young. I think he's only 24, so he will be bounced back better than ever come Paris 2024 in boxing news, more boxing news. Sky Nicholson beat the South Korean woman IG Im, so I think she's only got two more wins till she can get a gold now, which is awesome for old Sky Nicholson. Some bad news. In the surfing, Steph Gilmore, seven-time world champion, would you believe it? She got knocked out in the third round, but in light and you, Sally Fitzgibbons is into the quarters. We love to see that from Sally Fitzgibbons. Some more water sports. Dan Watkins in the K1 slalom canoeing or kayaking. He, poor, barnstorming run into the final, smashed it in the semi. But in the around the 15th gate in that final, Oh, he, got a bit, he got a bit stuck, made a bit of a mistake, and there was no coming back from there. Could have been entirely different if he hadn't made that mistake, but he ended up finishing ninth out of the 10-man field. He'll be disappointed with that mistake and trying to, again, bounce back in 2024 if he makes it there. And oh, this was a very, very strange one, one of the strangest events we've seen so far in these games, I reckon. The men's individual triathlon. Now, t- let me know if you guys saw this. I'll tell you about it. So they fired the starting gun, but what they mustn't have realized was that uh, they, were, they were swimming, of course, first. There was a massive boat completely in the way of half the guys about to dive into the water. They couldn't dive in. Half the other guys um, dived into the water, got about 30 meters forward, and then they got told to come back. And oh, chaos, chaos there. There was an Aussie, Jake Burt, we saw, who broke his nose after a kick to the face at that little false start. Absolute chaos there. And the Norwegian Christian Blumenfeld ended up winning that men's individual triathlon. <laughs> Crazy scenes. After that, he when he was crossing the line, he collapsed. He was screaming. And then he, well, not great viewing for TV audiences. He vomited just <laughs> a few seconds after that. Uh, ugly scenes there, but beautiful scenes as we saw him take the photo with the gold medal around his neck and in the skateboarding. Uh, speaking of some <laughs> trying circumstances, there were trying circumstances in the triathlon at the start, but the skateboarding, because of the kind of reflective concrete they've got going on there at the skate park, uh, it's 30 plus degrees, stinker out there and very, very humid as we know in Japan. Uh, but oh, in the women's street skateboarding final, let, let me tell you this, this Oh, yeah, this is going to make you feel old, and I'm only 18. It makes me feel old. Bronze medalist, 16-year-old from Japan, Nakayama Funa. Silver medalist, 13-year-old from Brazil, Raisa Lial. Gold medalist, you guessed it, 13 years old, Japanese Nishia Momiji. She won the gold. Oh, combined age of 42. There. Crazy, crazy stuff. Clearly a young person sport. I'm way past my prime in that. Otherwise, I would be smashing it out there in the skate park. But uh, Hayley Wilson, the Aussie representative for Australia, and that got knocked out in the heats. She's a wise and old veteran for the skaters. She's 19. Um, and in the archery, actually, some more kind of disappointing news for the Aussies. David Barnes, Ryan Tyke, Taylor Worth, a couple of those guys won bronze in Rio uh, five years ago. They got eliminated in the round of 16 to Chinese Taipei, heartbreaking stuff. Taylor Worth just missed a bullseye by a matter of millimetres, I reckon, with his last arrow, lost 28-27 to Chinese Taipei in the men's team archery. And late last night, uh, Australia, their medal hopes are gone. They lost their last game 4-1 in the softball to Mexico, the Aussie spirit. But, yeah, they the attack just hasn't been kind of as good as they would have liked it to be. I don't think they've scored more than one run in any of their games. But, yeah, well, it, it, it's been fun to watch the softball. Um, less fun news. Even less fun news, really. The rugby sevens. <laughs> Lost 29-19 to 19 to Argentina yesterday morning. 
really didn't get their cam- campaign off to a great start. The men in the Rugby Sevens there, they beat South Korea later on in the night, but their campaign is basically over unless they beat New Zealand at 11.30 a.m. this morning. That's going to be a miracle upset win, really, and they've got to rely on results kind of going their way. They need Argentina to have a worse kind of score differential than them. I think they have to lose to South Korea, which is quite unlikely, we must say. Ash Barty, she got knocked out of the singles recently, but she and Storm Sanders have progressed in the doubles, which we love to see. They beat uh, the Chinese group, the Chinese pair, Zhu Yifan and Yang Zhuan, 6-4, 6-4. And uh, speaking of <laughs> kind of good moments for Aussies, this was a really wholesome moment I found. Just before we get into our expert guest, uh, an Aussie woman called Jian Feng Lei. She's 48 years old. She moved here in the kind of early 90s, I think. Um, she's mother of two now. To sixth Olympic Games, most of any equal, most of any Aussie woman. She only really got called up because Stephanie Sung withdrew like late, uh, very very close to the start of the game. She was uh, Jian Feng Lei was 156th in the world in the pandemic. She was coming up against the number 35 in the world, the pole, Kriyan Li. Uh, she, you guessed it. I told you it was wholesome news. She won and she is into the third round. She's equal best Olympic performance for her. Hopefully we can see her go further and further and further and further. Speaking of kind of nice things that are happening at the moment, I've got a really nice guest on the show for you today, an expert guest in hockey. She was at the 2012 London Olympic Games with the Hockey Rue. She goes by the name of Georgia Nan Score and she's a friend of the show as well. It's not her first appearance here. Episode 39, she was on talking about her hockey career and her football career as well. So I'll just throw it over to her right now, I reckon. Here she is, Georgia Nan Score. Hey, Georgia, thanks for coming on the show. Welcome back. Uh, I reckon we'll just get straight into it. So the Hockey Roos, of course, a team pretty close to your heart. They've played earlier today, actually. So can you tell us about the last couple of results they've had? Yeah, so um, they've had a had a pretty good start to their campaign, really the the ideal start for them, um, two, two wins from two, um, beating Spain in the first round. And then today, uh, a pretty comprehensive 6-0 Win uh, over China, which um, you know probably haven't seen scoring like that for for quite some years. So um, certainly a, a very positive start for the girls, and um, yeah, they, I don't think they could really have asked for too much more. Oh yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, absolute shellacking, absolute thumping of China earlier yeah. today, which was very very good to see. Who do you reckon have been the kind of standout players for you, uh, kind of watching on so far for the Hockey Roos? Um, I, th- I mean, I think today, especially um, the whole forward midfield uh, are working really well together. So um, they're filled with a lot of youth and a lot of speed and skill um, through the midfield. They've got the um, you know, youngest in the team, a- Amy Lawton, fellow Victorian. Um, Steph Kershaw, um, experience of Brooke Paris uh, through there as well. Um, and then up front, um, the likes of Rosie Malone and and Mariah Williams, and then sort of the old heads, um, Emily Chalker, who who scored three goals in two games. Um, there's just they're just really w- working well together, and um, certainly playing some some really exciting, exciting attacking and and skillful hockey. Yeah, and friend of the show, Rach Lynch, smashing it in goals uh, in the first couple of games, I've noticed. But uh, they've kind of we've got three more group games against Japan, New Zealand, and Argentina, I believe, for the women. So do you reckon any of those yeah. teams pose a real threat or not? Well, I think they all could. Um, Japan, obviously, a home game. They're, they're going to put uh, – they've put a lot of resources into it. They're always a bit of a tricky opponent. Um, New Zealand, uh, probably the most – familiar opponents um, and, and always a close game. They've probably pipped us um, in a couple of the major tournaments recently, but I'm not sure what will happen during the tournament, but they're probably two key star players um, didn't play the first round through injury. So uh, whether that continues or not could could um, be yeah impact the game quite a bit. And then Argentina uh, going into the tournament probably would have thought would be one of the top contenders um, but came off a 3-0 loss to New Zealand in the first round. So uh, I think all could potentially pose a threat. Um, it's, I think, with uh, the, the lead-up of not really seeing much international hockey for 18 months, I think it um, it's all a bit of an unknown and 
and they're going to have to play sort of as well as they have the first two rounds to to make sure that they yeah get through those games. Yeah, and I heard some stat going around that the Hockey Roos had played six games in the I don't know last eighteen months, twelve months, something like that, all against New Zealand. So obviously not yeah, their and all ideal rec- preparation. Yeah, all recently. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, they were all in the last couple of months, obviously, because there's been no travel allowed. So, um, yeah, obviously a very familiar opponent and it's always sort of decided within one or two goals and many draws in those matchups. Um, but all the rest of it, uh, particularly the European opponents who have been playing, being able to play quite a bit through the COVID, um, COVID years, uh, will be a complete um, you know, unknown, I think. Yeah, so uh, Hockey Roos are fourth in the world, I think, and if my maths are right, three teams better than them in the world at the moment. So there's three teams that uh, really could rival them, maybe more teams. Who do you reckon are those teams that could rival them for a spot on the podium, spot at the gold medal, Deus? I think, yeah, I think the very obvious one is is Holland. Um, I think really they, they'd be, be thinking they uh, the, the gold medal's theirs, um, obviously, a lot can happen, but on history, um, they're, they're going to be extremely tough to beat. Um, and then, as I said, like pretty much it's a, it's a bit of an unknown. New Zealand will be competitive. Uh, the, the, the European teams, Germany, um, yeah, Germany, uh, and then you've got Argentina, who, as I said before, going into the tournament, you'd think would be, be sort of one of the, the competitors and, and sort of came off a not a great first, first game. So... Um, yeah, it really is a bit of an unknown, um, but uh, I certainly say Holland, uh, Holland are always the team to beat, and um, hopefully, yeah, the Hockey Roos will be up there, up there as well. They've certainly started, started as best as they can, and um, yeah, set them up themselves up really well. And Holland, of course, coached by an Aussie, Alison Annan, a legend, uh, mastermind yeah. behind all that, another friend of the show, of course. I think episode thirty, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, but can I just before we move on to the men's side of things, uh, can I get a prediction? I'll put you on the spot a bit here. Get a prediction for the gold medal and how far the hockey roos are going to go. Uh, I think, as I said, pretty hard to go past um, past Holland. Um, I would say that they're at the moment favourites, but um, yeah, I, I can only go off off the, the first few games and and the way that they're playing at the moment. I, I think the hockey roos might be right up there. So. Um, hopefully we see them in the gold medal game and, and going as far as they can. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. And as promised, I'll move on to the men a bit now. I know it's not quite as uh, as much of an area of expertise for you compared to the women, but we can talk about it a bit. The Kookaburras, they're number one in the world, so mm. probably the favourite, right up there with the favourites at least. They've smashed it in the first two games. There was a bit of a tough one against Japan, actually, 5-3, but then mm. smashed India. Did you watch those two and what did you think? Yeah, no, I did. Um, certainly, the the Japan game was was an interesting one. They started really well, and Japan hit back, um, mm. you know, in a bit of a flurry really quickly. And that I think was a bit of a shock to everybody. But uh, I, I think they showed their class by being able to pull that one back in the second half. Um, the 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 Indian game was a pretty complete, comprehensive performance. I, I don't think they. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you play like that, and and a gold medal could could easily be yours. Like, I think any team would find find it hard to stop them um, when they're playing like that because it was, I guess, a complete uh, team performance, and and they were they were pretty pretty solid, um, you know, right right across the the ground. Yeah, and India is no pushover, so a seven one victory, just awesome yeah. to see uh, from the men. Any kind of key players that have been starring for them so far that you've noticed? I thought in the first game, um, Tom Craig played really well, but didn't play the second game. I'm not. I'm not quite sure why that was. Um, uh, Tim Brand's been really good up forward, really, really lively. Uh, and then Jake Wedham through the the, the middle. Um, yeah, always creates a lot of opportunities. He he has a great. Open, he's kind of moved from his career back. Uh, uh, he started as a striker. He's kind of moved back through the field and now has a bit more of a, a key role through the midfield uh, and, and he manages to get quite a lot of overlap um, going forward. So I think they've been great, great drivers. Uh, but then you've got Blake Govers as well, who who's a pretty much um, goal-scoring, drag-flicking machine. So having someone like that, um, I'm not sure what the, the stat was, but his conversion rate is incredibly high and 
when you've got someone like that up there at the, the top of the penalty corner, uh, you're always going to be pretty hard to keep out. Mm, yeah, spot on. Uh, but just kind of on the rivals kind of thing, so Australia look a pretty intimidating force at the moment and, uh, yeah, definitely hard to beat for any team and they'll obviously be aiming for gold. Uh, lots of other teams aiming for gold though. So who do you reckon could really challenge them and push them all the way? Yeah, again, I think uh, the European teams, you've got Holland who are always you know, up there, Belgium who have been in the last few years um, you know, really, really strong, uh, Argentina, the, the reigning gold medalists. So uh, I think any any of those teams could be in it to win it. And and I guess with the quarterfinal system, um, as we've sort of seen, we saw in Rio, both the Hockey Roos and the Kookaburras, um, you know, probably had a bit of an off game in the quarterfinal and that and that's done. So it's a bit cutthroat um, and, and they're going to need to make sure that, yeah, whoever they come up against, they're, they're right on top of their game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not wrong there at all. And just before uh, we kind of go to a bit of a different thing, um, prediction for the Kookaburras where they're going to finish and a gold medalist might be the same prediction there. But what, what Yeah, look, uh, the number one team in the world, uh, again, they've started off really well. Uh, the goal scoring power is uh, pretty incredible. So I, I would like to see them obviously win gold. And uh, and I think, um, yeah, they, they they would believe themselves that they, they should be be right up there as well. Yeah, yeah, it'll be very, very exciting if we can see them go all the way. And just before we wrap up, uh, we've got a bit of a like a social kind of question of the day that we've been doing all throughout these daily episodes in the Olympics. So people can, the viewers and the listeners can answer this and I'll put it to you as well. So the question today is uh, what Olympic sport do you reckon you would be best at? Obviously outside hockey because yeah, you're a superstar of hockey. Outside hockey, what would be the sport that you would be best at? Um, I don't know if I'd be best at it, but I think at the moment um, the, the road cycling sort of got my interest, um, particularly during lockdown. Victoria did quite a bit of riding and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, watching the, the cycling over the last couple of days um, has been quite inspiring. I don't – yeah, certainly wouldn't be the one I'd be best at, but, um, you yeah, know, it's one that I've been really interested in and uh, certainly inspiring me to, to want to get out on, uh, on the bike a bit more. Oh, yeah, yeah, big time. Same here, really. And uh, for all those interested, the next Hockey Roos game for the women uh, on Wednesday at 7.30 uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time against Japan and the Kookaburras uh, against Argentina on Tuesday or today, if you're listening, on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. But I reckon that just about wraps us up. Thanks very much for coming on, Georgia. Thanks for having me back. Thanks so much, Georgia, for coming back on the show. Really, really appreciate it. It was great to chat to you about a bit of hockey and enlighten me and hopefully enlighten our listeners and viewers. But I promise to preview after that expert little interview. So we'll get straight into it. What is on today for the Aussies? Lots of medal chances. Of course, our main medal chances, as they are for most of the games, in the pool, in the swimming all kicking off this morning, Kaylee McEwen is chasing her first gold medal ever and the first gold medal at the Games, of course, in 100-metre backstroke at 11.51 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is the same time zone I'm going to be using for all these times. Emily Seabom is also in that race. Hopefully, we can see one or both of them get on the podium. Mitch Larkin is in the men's equivalent of that 100-metre backstroke event at 11.59, probably straight after. I'm guessing uh, there's a couple other events, Australian list, women's 100-metre breaststroke and the men's 200-metre freestyle. Disappointed that no Aussies could get into that, but what can you do? Kyle Chalmers and Cameron McAvoy in the 100-metre freestyle heats later on tonight, 8.18 p.m. They're joined by Brianna Throssell, Isaac Stubblety Cook. Oh, that's a cracker of a name there. Isaac Stubblety Cook and Matthew Wilson. And of course, the men's 4x200 metre team in the heats tonight. And a couple of days ago, we had Hayley Wilds on the show, had a cracking basketball chat. She was looking forward to the Opals. I was looking forward to the Opals. And the wait is over. The Opals kickstart their campaign tonight against Belgium at 6.20 p.m. Liz Cambage less, of course, but hopefully they can perform as well as we know they can. Hopefully they can really push to get into the final and maybe even win it. Speaking of proven performers, Jess Fox in the canoe slalom semifinal at 4 p.m., Finishes top 10 out of 15, and that should be in the final just 75 minutes late at 5.15 p.m. 
fingers crossed, Jess goes well, goes one or even two better than her bronze in Rio women's triathlon as well. Spoke about cracking names with Isaac Stubblety Cook 30 seconds ago. Here are some cracking names for you. Uh, for the Aussie representation, the women's triathlon, we've got Emma Jeffcoat, Jazz Hedgeland, and Ashley Gentle. There you go. That's a nice little triumvirate of names. That kicks off at 7.30 a.m. Whew, early rise for them, 6.30 a.m. To, to embark on the women's triathlon. That's a 1.5K swim, a 40K bike ride, and a 10K run in the women's swimming, women's triathlon event, should I say. In the surfing, of course, we've seen a couple of Aussies eliminated yesterday, but we've still got Owen Wright in and Sally Fitzgibbons in. Owen Wright is coming up against the Peruvian Luca Messinas at 9.48 a.m. Uh, that would be good to watch, and... Uh, just as good to watch Sally Fitzgibbons against Japan's Amuro Suzuki at 12, 12 p.m. Crunch game for the Matildas. Oh, boy, oh, boy, against the USA, a bit of a bogey team for them. Bogey team for a lot of teams, really. But the Matildas have only beaten them once ever, I think. And it's at 6 p.m. It's the final group game for the Matildas. If they win, they're guaranteed to get through to the quarterfinals. If they draw, most likely into the quarterfinals, but a win, of course, would be very nice, but no easy task for the Matildas. You know what I love? I love a bit of cross-country mountain bike racing, and I've been gifted a bit of cross-country mountain bike racing at 4 p.m. today at the Izu Mountain Bike Course. Rebecca McConnell from Canberra is our representative there, one of the 38 athletes strutting their stuff in the cross-country mountain bike race. Rugby Sevens, I've told you about this before. Australia's men coming again up against New Zealand at 11.30am. Need results to go their way, need to win that and have some luck go their way in other games. Quarterfinals later in the evening, but most likely no Aussie interest in that. Water polo, Lena Mihailovic was in action yesterday, today. Oh, big one. The men, the Aussie Sharks, the Australian Sharks are against Croatia at 8.50 p.m. I love water polo. You should too. Check that out. You should be watching that. We've also got a bit of diving, a bit of equestrian, a bit of fencing, a bit of gymnastics. No Aussies in that, but medals guaranteed in that today. And to end uh, the review, the preview, sorry, on the same note we ended the review, we're going to talk through some wholesome stuff. Bit of table tennis. Jian Fung Lei, I told you she was into the third round. She's coming up against Germany's Ying Han in the third round at 4.30 p.m. today. So that's going to be on one of the 7 Plus channels over on the app or the website, wherever you want to watch it. You know what? That just about wraps me up. Uh, oh, thanks very much for listening, watching. Wherever you're checking this out, guys, make sure you do all you can to support the show. Subscribe, like, follow, shout us out. Give us a review. Reviews, those are big ones. We love a review. But that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching or listening, guys. See you tomorrow.